<laughs> Welcome to the know, I'm Meg Turney. I'm Ryan Haywood. We're in Australia for just one week, and everything goes batshit bananas in the video game world. Guys, you couldn't hold it together for one week. Nintendo NX rumors, another possible Steam ARG. Stop already, guys. Five Nights at Freddy's World got pulled after terrible reviews, and who even knows what the hell's going on with Destiny right now? No one. No one. That's it's who. a mystery. Uh, and now, EA is skipping E3. Yesterday, Electronic Arts announced that it won't have a booth for it or a traditional press conference at E3 2016. Instead, opting for its own event the prior weekend, uh, June 12th through the 14th. They're taking their sports ball and they're going home, people. The new event, you almost punched me in the face. I went this way. It was so close to my face. How, what are you talking about? I'm a little gun This is what Ryan. happens when we don't have glasses. You get close to me, I just get worried. It's true. The new event, which will be free to the public, is called EA Play and literally takes place in the building right next to where E3 happens every year in the Los Angeles Convention Center. At EA Play, gamers can try out new EA games, participate in live events, and probably buy some sort of DLC. The weekend will conclude with an EA briefing on Sunday afternoon, so don't worry, Sports 16 fans, you'll still get your healthy dose of that. It just won't be happening during E3 proper. Uh, one of the largest gaming publishers pulling out of E3 in favor of their own event will of course be felt by attendees. Traditionally, EA has one of the largest booths on the show floor at E3 and holds its press conference in the middle of the week alongside other major briefings from Sony, Microsoft, and Ubisoft. Yeah, this year, however, they'll only be taking private meetings at the trade show. According to EA, this decision is all about the players, but of course, having your own event so you can talk about nothing but yourself is probably a little bit about you too. By the way, they brought out like Pele last year, and nobody gave a shit, so I feel like now they're like, fuck you, we're doing our own thing. Uh, anyway, EA also announced that EA Play will be happening simultaneously in London on June 12th. Naturally, a large publisher bailing out of E3 is prompting discussions all over the internet about whether or not this means E3 is losing its relevance. After all, we saw Nintendo start the same trend back in 2013, moving to their popular Nintendo Direct format instead of playing the typical E3 game. Back when that happened, everyone said it was a sign of doom for Nintendo, but it might actually have been forward thinking at the time. Yeah, the point of these events in the past was to convince the press to spend more time talking about you than your competition. It was simultaneously good for investors to see the positive press, but that press was also the only way companies like Nintendo and Sony had access to their fans. I mean, yeah, there's literally no other way they could interact with anyone. Well, I mean, to be fair, back in the day, like, blogs and press was how people got information. Also, this is not a consumer show. This is for press. Right, but to tell consumers information. Ryan, just read the script. Uh, but things are... Obviously, completely different I now. You just did it. With everyone having access to live streams, blogs, and everyone trying to out snark each other and everyone else on Twitter during E3. Uh, as much as it sucks to see a bigger publisher bailing on an event like this, it actually kind of makes sense if you're a company like EA. Last year, people were too busy losing their minds over things like Shenmue 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake number 11 <laughs> to pay much attention to your overpriced attempt at Battlefront as you wanted. To be fair, their Battlefront teaser looked pretty damn cool and people went ape shit over if, it. If only teasers were reality. Yes, if only. Mm. Smaller, we're talking relatively smaller since E3 is really huge, more direct events are probably going to be the norm in the years to come. The appetite for gaming news is such that there are many more game conferences spread throughout the year, and many of them are hosted by these publishers themselves. I mean, Activision uses BlizzCon as its own platform, for instance, and Sony has PSX. Microsoft also just announced its own similar press event for February 25th. It's only a matter of time before Ubisoft announces its own drugged up Burning Man version of a video game conference. I would so go to that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Burning Man and video games. And sexy so assassins. So just like none of the sand, yeah. but like lots of video games of people with like costumes and a bunch of drugs. Absolutely. Just so much drugs. It actually all the psychedelic colors will be there, and right. so everything will just look normal. Oh. It has to be inverted. Uh, so does this actually spell bad news for E3 now that EA and Nintendo are both out and more publishers might do the same? Uh, not really. If anything, E3 is growing in its attendance both offline and online. Uh, last year, E3 saw 50,000 plus attendees for the first time in a decade, in part because the exhibitors were allowed to hand out tickets to the public, which brought an extra four to 5,000 people to the floor. In terms of online numbers, Twitch reported that E3 brought in more than 500,000 concurrent viewers in its biggest moments. And how could we not mention YouTube, who reported more than 8 million views in just 12 hours of live streaming the show, many of which were hosted by some very awesome people and also Brian. 
I know. I just, I just no. wanted to rub it in. No there were also 274 exhibitors in 2015, which is a huge jump up from the 187 in 2014, which means that in addition to more people watching and showing up in person to see all of the new games, there were a lot more developers there with new games to play. A lot of that can be contributed to the rise of mobile and VR development. Uh, of course, none of this matches peak E3, which was back in the mid-2000s. So those com conferences saw an attendance of up to 70,000. Uh, that was before the format change that saw this small, super boring E3s of 2007 and 2008, which was basically like canceling the Super Bowl of video games. Uh, but starting in 2009, attendance has been ticking up every year. And thanks to outlets like YouTube and Twitch, consumers can see more of it than ever before. So in a weird way, E3 is getting both smaller and bigger all at the same time. It's up in attendance, viewership, and participation among game developers, but that might cause some of the larger publishers to start pulling away over time, which leads us back to why EA and Nintendo are choosing to change the game. If you can talk directly to your players, why not do it? After all, it's not like Nintendo's downsizing for E3 has caused a diminishment of hype for their product. If only. Yeah, I'm for sure you're upset about it. In fact, their Nintendo Direct at this year's E3 is probably one of the most anticipated parts. I'm not saying that. It's the most anticipated it's parts not. of the week. Thanks to the probable announcement of their new console, the NX, or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, well, at least that part was at the script. Uh, let's just hope the announcement is nothing like E3's 2009's Wii Vitality Sensor. And to be fair, um, on Nintendo's front, they also have one of the largest booths and and it's one of the most fun booths to be in. It's always colorful, they have great places to take photos, so it's not like they're out of E3 altogether, they're just not doing a traditional Best conference. thing that can be said, That's colorful. It, it's really fun. The same is true, by the way, for EA. In all likelihood, this probably means they've got a crap load of announcements this year, and they don't want to get lost in the shuffle of NX details, new games, and the overload of VR titles. Among others, we can expect to see more of Mass Effect Andromeda, hopefully, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a future Battlefront content, again, hopefully, Hopefully, the visceral Star Wars open RPG Battlefield and more DLC than you could shake a money stick at. Plus, you'll still be able to listen to them fully. <laughs> I can say fully without laughing. <laughs> you'll be able to see. Nope, fuck it. They're gonna blow themselves in their Sunday presser. Everyone wins! In all reality, with so much going on at E3, you probably won't even notice the absence of EA. Uh, do you remember when Sony, Paramount, and Marvel skipped Comic Con last year? Yes. Yeah, that actually happened. Uh, instead, Marvel, surprise, opted for its own mini event a few months prior, where it announced it pl its plans to take over your movie going lives for you know, the next millennium. Yeah, exactly. So even though it seems like we can expect more heavy hitters to pull back on their E3 presence in the coming years, it's not going to change the fact that it's still the industry event where most developers make their biggest splash. And if last year's press conferences are any indication, some of the big guys like Sony are totally content to unleash a barrage of jaw-dropping announcements at E3, regardless of this whole paradigm shift. <sighs> well, it's a shame that bigger publishers like EA or Nintendo decide not to participate as much, but as we've seen with Nintendo so far, E3 is just as E3 as ever. Yes. Uh, until it decides to change its format all over. So what do you guys think of EA deciding to skip out on E3? Do you think it means that they've got some big plans in store for EA Play, or is it going to be a big old letdown? And also, what are you going to hear about tomorrow? Uh, to stay informed about the latest E3 news for 2016 and Nintendo's next Vitality Sensor, yeah. uh, like this video and subscribe to stay in the know. Yeah. Video synced it up. Hello. Welcome to the next. Hello. Oh, I said hello again because I was... Sorry. Are we starting? Yes. Okay.